you know there has been a lot of thought about uh, contextualization of the education and the local management of a school uh, people are saying that panchayat should be able to manage unfortunately panchayats don't work that is why we don't know what is the other solution uh, so uh, actually every school should be managed locally and every should school every school should evolve its own syllabus based on what that village is you know uh, what children are like a uh, uh, person here said you know they run 54000 schools in uh, tribal areas so this contextualization and local management are very very essential currently we don't know how to handle this but that is the only way uh, ahead that the schools are managed locally and schools evolve their own syllabus lo locally and then you know they teach their children i just want to end with what uh, once uh, i've shared it with many people what shivram karan's daughter once told us you know shivram karan many of you know was a great writer a nan bit award winner and a great thinker of karnataka so once we met his daughter and she shared this experience so karan's three dot three children so karan did not allow them to go to school so they were 12 year old and they were shouting uh, father you know our all our uh, um, batchmates all are already in fifth standard sixth standard and you are not sending us to school so she said karan made one comment he said learn and then go to school don't go to school to learn so as soon as you say that i finish my learning i'll send you to school so once the, all these children sat together and they said we'll tell our father tomorrow that we have learned everything now you can send us to school so they then they told him then he said okay from tomorrow you go to school fortunately you know in those days uh, he was in dakshin kannada and uh, in villages he could he could immediately put them in fifth standard or uh, <laughs> something like that so they didn't miss they're all doctorates doing great service the well educated people the school is not the only option i think even now uh, government recognizes that home schooling is perfectly legal in india we can, we need not send our children to school at all we can do home schooling lot of clubs have come up in bangalore where parents don't send their children to school they come together and you know run their own uh, weekend schools so many things are happening i mean you know you really don't know because it's such a vast subject um, all experimentations are welcome and i think not only even the next generation of people who are here who are leading the ngos you can also go on experimenting another 20 years there is absolutely no problem experimentation is welcome in education sector i think this time there was a lot of comment about quality um, uh, of learning quality of input the why is of why i'm learning um, you know the, see the thing with quality um, happiness of learning having fun while learning see we can't i think there needs to be a middle ground with respect to activity based learning vis-a-vis -vis memory based learning there is significant uh, documented evidence of the need for memory based learning as well so we can't be a completely activity based learning approach itself there needs to be a middle ground i mean um, uh, there are enough uh, uh, initiatives in the us and the west where they're pulling back from a totally activity based to a little more memory led exercises as well um, to answer your question with respect to they are not interested to read and learn have you been a parent i do you have children of your own okay so if you are a parent you'll really know how what a child really wants they do want they there are certain things you will have to make them do so um um it, it is important to strike a balance of being a guardian and an indulgent parent so it's important to tell them what is important as well because you've seen that life and it is important to guide them and be the role model in a fun way in an indulgent way in a happy way to tell them what they need to be doing as well um um uh, i'll take that question because it was directed at me um uh, yes we do every structure of every program that's designed before we design uh, children are part of the uh, designing process itself uh, we completely believe in the child's input um and uh, and every person involved in that process as well be it the teacher be it the parent so you having a certain expectations and certain times there is uh originality in their thinking there is uh, when there is innocence in it there is sometimes much more truth in it and um, so we completely involve in them and we involve them in the monitoring and evaluation and assessment of whether we have done it right as well certainly i think uh, more and more uh, learning should be experiential to the because that uh, in my mind that's what makes you think right and reflect on the world <coughs> 
and that makes your learning more relevant um, to the world you live in. Um, I think finally, just one last point I want to make is that many of these issues around what is it, the philosophy of education and all this, one of the things we found in India is that there needs to be a lot more uh, um, investment in research and education. So there's uh, um, this whole issue of uh, uh, language learning among tribals is a huge issue, right? I mean, so if they're in a Hindi medium school, so we were in Madhya Pradesh, we'd gone to see some government schools in tribal areas where it was a Hindi medium school and then we were told that actually Hindi is the third language. It, there was like a local dialect, then there was the, the regional dialect, then there was Hindi. So, so but, but when you actually think about uh, issues like language learning in India and how much research is there around language learning, there's very little. Um, so, can we actually invest in uh, research around learning in India? I think that's a big area that we think is important. Um, and I think then finally, uh, the Center for Education and Innovation, what we're also finding is that there's a very little documentation of what happened, right? So, so we come across people who develop curriculum all over the country and these are all very uh, locally tailored curriculum. I mean, they, they fit in with the NCF, but they're all very adapting to local uh, uh, conditions and, uh, and learning conditions. But all of these uh, worksheets, curricula, they're all locked up within these NGOs. I mean, they're used by the NGO, but it's not really, it's not really informing the larger system. And I think so, efforts like yours to actually document all of this is also very important. I think what we don't need to forget is that we were a child once. And uh, innately we know how learning happens. Uh, today I relive the way I learned as a child when I look at my nephew and nieces who just got turned two years old. And it's fascinating to watch that when you bring a toy, they're more interested in the wrapper than the toy. Because they're fascinated by the colors, the designs of the wrapper and not so much in the toy. It's fascinating to learn how they role model their parents, how they pick up behaviors that they see around them. It's fascinating to learn that you don't actually watch a child in cradle suddenly jump up and start, learn, start running. There's a certain development process that all of us go through in learning. There are sensitive periods when learning happens. For a two-year-old child who is just picking up language, they can pick up five languages at the same time. So they are like a sponge just absorbing. But if today I had to learn a new language, I find it a lot more difficult because I have moved past that sensitive period when language learning happens. So someone was talking about enabling environments, someone is talking about supportive ecosystems, someone is talking about role of parents, educators, someone is talking about relevance of education. When we talk about all of this, there is a space of learning. And there's, there is learning with life or learning for life, learning through life. But there is this space of learning and the joy of learning which enables us to then become who we are. And I, th I think the reflection that I am kind of left with is that is a question that we ask, that I would rather each of us ask ourselves is what is the role I am playing as an adult today in child learning? Whether as a parent, as an interested adult, as an NGO worker, as an NGO leader, as a government official, what is the role I am playing to enable that learning to happen?